We're here at Providence Park with Bob Bradley, former national team coach of the United States, of Egypt, former MLS Cup winner with the Chicago Fire, also the Metro Stars in Chivas, USA, and now back in the U.S. as the head coach of Stabæk. How has Norway been for you? Uh, it's been uh, another chapter, a good one. Um, Stabæk is a small club, but uh, I always say has a big heart. Everyone that I spoke to, they were a little bit skeptical about coming to Stabæk. Everyone said, no, the team doesn't really have a chance. All experts predict the team will go down. But I, I felt that I could uh, come in and, and show a young group of players how we could compete and how to play good football. And really, we were the surprise in Norway last year. Have you been able to follow what's going on here in, in this city? And what are your thoughts on the culture of soccer in Portland? Uh, well, I'm old enough to appreciate even the old timbers. And uh, I think when you talk about the culture of soccer in Portland, um, what uh, Merritt Paulson understood and what the current organization did a great job of is, is not uh, thrown out the past. And so certainly Clive Charles was uh, an unbelievable figure in Portland soccer, also coached uh, uh, as part of the U.S. national team program. Uh, I still remember at a camp uh, years and years ago meeting Jimmy Conway. And Jimmy, uh, is, is, at that time, um, I remembered all he had accomplished as a player, but was such a humble guy. So I think what the Timbers did is they understood uh, the history, uh, they came in and they really connected with the fans and everyone I spoke to spoke uh, how it became the best environment in the league, how passionate the supporters are, uh, came out of the blocks with good teams, that helps. So I think uh, uh, hats off to a good job. It's been almost a decade since you coached in Major League Soccer. How much has it changed both off the pitch and on the pitch in the decade or so since you were last managing in this league? Uh, well, obviously a lot more teams, yeah. and, and so uh, this tremendous uh, rivalry in the Pacific Northwest, that didn't exist, but it shows that uh, uh, when the league started adding franchises, they, they made good, good decisions. So I, I think it, it was done in an intelligent way. It was by bringing in some big players, it was by putting more into academies, uh, making sure that American players were looked after and uh, you know I think all of us that have been part of this league uh, are proud to see uh, what's happened in 20 you know 20th okay. season hard to believe you're an outspoken guy and have an influential voice in American soccer I think and speaking to the, the state of the league Jurgen Klinsman has caused controversy talking about the state of the league do you think that the US national team can be successful with its best players playing in this league in MLS Everybody's situation is different. That's the, the part that uh, I think gets lost when you start these general uh, broad comments. Um, certainly there are moments when a player might benefit from some experiences abroad, whether it's on loan or, or at a certain point in, in his career feeling like, you know what, I want to go and test the waters over there and see what I can do. But the big thing that nobody seems to talk about is that when you come back in your team, you are going to be a big player. You're going to be responsible for, for being a strong leader. You're going to be responsible for being uh, a spokesman. And, and so uh, as great as it is to see some players go to Europe, in some cases, they don't ever get the chance to be leaders. And I certainly know that uh, uh, Michael's greatest frustration was just feeling that he had earned the chance to be a big player in a big team. And when nobody seemed to uh, give him that type of opportunity, then he was so excited to, to come back to Toronto and feel like it's a project. Uh, in order for it to be successful, I have to take a big role. And I certainly think when that happens, that's good for the national team. So I, I, I don't think there's one answer. As a manager, do you feel like you had to knock down some of those walls of being able to be a leader in international football as an American? Uh, well, for me, I, I think it, it's interesting. Uh, there were some people, uh, some writers, that before the league started talked about how uh, American coaches wouldn't have the ability 
in a locker room of big players to command respect. Uh, and I thought that that was nonsense. Uh, and, and so when we put our Chicago team together and you have strong personalities like Peter Novak, uh, captain of Poland, like Christos Stoichkov, like Lubos Kubik, uh, your credibility as a manager gets tested every day. If you stand in front of guys like that and come up with things that make no sense, then you're not going to last long. I was lucky to coach some big players so that when I then went to Egypt or when I, I, I take jobs outside the country, uh, I've already been, been through the challenges that give you confidence. So I feel pretty good about that. Finally, spending some time here in Portland for the Simple Invitational, what have you enjoyed the most about being here, or being back coaching against the MLS teams? Oh, there's a lot, but I mean, first and foremost, it's such a tremendous opportunity for our team to be here. Um, so many of our young players have never been to the United States. In all ways, I would want to thank Mary Paulson and, and Gavin Wilkinson and the, the Portland Timber organization because we've been uh, treated in a really first class way. And, and for us, it's a great experience. And uh, now we just have to see if we can play two more, two more good games. Bob, thanks for the time. Okay, all the best. Thank yeah. you.